To prevent us from inexorably driving ourselves to an early extinction, the most crucial and time-sensitive issue is the transition to renewable energy sources. But guess what? Carbon capture technology and, unsurprisingly, Elon Musk hold special significance in this whole process. How? Let's see. The idea of climate change caused by humans is not foreign to any of us. And although carbon should be present in our ecosystem as a vital and beneficial component, we have messed things up. By releasing too much carbon that had been sequestered underground for millions of years, we have destroyed the natural order of things. We supplemented it and there is now far more of it than the environment can handle. For thousands of years, scientists have estimated that the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide was about 280 parts per million. As we began chopping down trees to burn them and as we slaughtered whales for their oil, which we then burned, that number began to rise at an abnormally high rate, reaching 300 by the year 1800. After that, the chart became vertical, and it still is as of now. Technology advancements have allowed humanity to safely collect and burn fossil fuels, increasing atmospheric CO2 levels by around 400 ppm today. But it will get worse. The current production rate releases 45 billion tons of CO2 annually. Carbon emissions are increasing at an alarming rate, and we're waiting to see their impact on our planet, climate, and society. But let's pause all this discussion for a second. This is where Elon Musk enters the picture, claiming all this to be the most ill-conceived scientific endeavor ever. A mere reduction in carbon output is insufficient for our environment. If we want to save ourselves actively, reversing the damage done is also essential. If we can find out renewable energy sources while simultaneously reducing our carbon footprint, there's no reason to believe that life on Earth can't be maintained for another billion years. This is why Elon Musk is investing $100 million to spur the development of carbon capture technology. Now, back in 2021, he and a group called XPRIZE began working on this. Elon has stated that he intends to initiate a conversation on the necessity of carbon capture in the long run. This is an absurdly tough problem to solve, and we all know it will take a long time to find the appropriate solution. Nevertheless, we must begin this process immediately to do this, XPRIZE encourages interdisciplinary groups of scientists and engineers to create fully operational carbon capture prototypes. They require an operating system that can actively remove 1 kiloton or 1,000 tons of carbon from the atmosphere yearly. The winning team will get $50 million to begin working on the gigaton scalability of their prototype. The remaining $50 million will be split between the top three runners-up to aid them along. And because the competition will last for four years, we won't find out who won until 2025. Although we have already come far in the video, there is an essential thing we have not discussed yet. How does carbon capture actually work, or rather, what does it refer to? The carbon capturing process involves catching, or better said, capturing, as the name indicates, any carbon dioxide before it's emitted into the atmosphere. Now, currently, the most used method is known as direct air capture, or DAC. The effect is similar to inserting a huge air filter into the aorta. Massive fans draw in air and shove it through a filter that collects the carbon so that the air that exits is pure. The captured carbon is eventually redeposited underground. Iceland is home to the world's first and currently only commercial scale DAC facility. The plant is called Orca and is run by a firm called Climeworks. In September 2020, Orca was released. The plant's eight collectors annually collect 500 tons for a total of 4 kilotons, which is supposedly the same as planting 40 million trees. Although this plant may seem like the perfect solution to our problems, it actually is not. Even with this technology, it is not all sunshine and roses. At present, we still lack the knowledge to make DAC sufficiently energy efficient to be truly effective. These capture plants consume a tremendous amount of energy while operating. A windmill farm the size of a major city would be required to power a large-scale DAC using only renewable energy sources. But do not worry. 
We have other options as well. Carbon capture in the ocean can also be accomplished through natural means. Ingenious plans are being considered right now to cultivate massive populations of algae in the open ocean, which would then absorb carbon from the water and air. Sea plants can be used in a similar fashion. The ocean absorbs much of the carbon dioxide we release, so seaweed can help convert that carbon dioxide into oxygen due to the vastness of the ocean. This can add up to a significant amount. But relating to carbon capture, Elon Musk may also have hidden agendas. He is reportedly considering Mars as a backup home for humanity. Mostly, he uses this reasoning to justify sending rockets into space, where they will burn fuel and contribute to the very problem of carbon abundance. He thinks it's worth it because there's no other way to get a rocket into space. Elon wants to carry our wisdom to the far corners of the never-ending horizons of space. However, currently there does not appear to be any other highly developed sentient species in the universe. However tragic this realization may be, human beings are the universe's rarest and most limited resource. That being the case, we must do everything in our power to not only maintain our current state, but to expand our species' reach throughout the cosmos. However, some people think Elon might be trying to kill two birds with one stone. The project Elon has proposed will not only help alleviate climate change on Earth, but will also be instrumental to Musk's desire to build a settlement on Mars. Let's see how it works. The initial step is a trip to Mars. We use an oxygen and methane fuel mixture to power our Starship rocket. We already have oxygen in our environment. To get methane, CO2 is combined with hydrogen and a catalyst. This process results in the production of methane and water. Now you may be beginning to understand the significance of capturing carbon. Whatever carbon we can manage to extract out of our environment, Musk plans to use it for making methane. Even a massive rocket like Starship can only carry enough fuel to get us to Mars and land. After that point, the fuel will be completely depleted and the ship will be unable to return to orbit. You may become stranded on Mars after this, but again, Elon Musk has our back. SpaceX selected methane as Starship's rocket fuel largely because it is a resource that can be mined on Mars. The collection of methane gas must, however, be done in a more indirect manner. To understand this, I require you to take a flashback to your elementary level chemistry courses. Methane is a byproduct of hydrogen and carbon. Thus, we only need to join these two components and alas, we have our rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water and we know that water exists on Mars in the form of ice. There is no doubt that electrolysis can separate hydrogen and oxygen into their constituent elements. On Earth, this practice is commonplace. This means that we now have both hydrogen and oxygen, and now all that is left is to breathe. Our hydrogen and carbon, which are released by exhaling, can be combined immediately. Mars has a very tenuous atmosphere composed mostly of carbon dioxide, but nonetheless, it's still unclear how we'd extract that element from Mars's thin air. Hopefully, we will figure this out too.